This is Science Quest. With your host, Jed Allen Friel. Everything science is Science Quest. Hi, I'm Jed Allen Friel. Thanks for joining me on Science Quest. Today we've ridden into a cabin in the backwoods of northwest Indiana, and I want to take a little opportunity to talk to you about heat energy and how it's transferred. So let's take a walk on over to the cabin. First thing you're going to notice is it snowed last night. What a great night. And obviously the snow has a lot less energy in it than it used to have when it was water. Obviously water had a lot more energy in it than the snow does. Now, without a doubt, out here there's a lot less energy right now than there is in the cabin. Let's go on inside and take a look at the difference. Oh, well, the first thing you notice is it's a lot warmer in here than it is outside. I wonder why. You ever think about that? Obviously the molecules are moving a lot faster here in this cabin than they are in the outside area around the cabin. Obviously because earlier today I built a fire. Well the fire here today is going to help us talk about how heat is transferred. And it's transferred in three major ways. Conduction, convection, and radiation. So let's talk about conduction first. As our fire burns, it heats up the molecules that are in the iron, so the molecules get a little bit more energy, and they start bumping into the molecules around them. And as those molecules start moving, they get warmer. They transfer their energy to the bottom of the bucket. Then the bucket starts to get warm. This happens through conduction. Molecules bumping into molecules, bumping into molecules. They're not moving. The molecules that make up the stove are still in the stove. And the molecules that make up the bucket are still in the bucket. But they bump into each other. Now, the second way the heat moves is convection. Now, this is when the molecule does actually move. Imagine that conduction happens and all of a sudden in the bottom of my bucket of water, a molecule gets warm. That molecule expands. Since it's now lighter than the molecules surrounding it, it floats to the top of the bucket. Now we've got convection. The molecule actually moved. That's how our weather patterns are determined. Warm air rises and cold air moves in to replace it and we have weather cycles. So here we've got conduction forcing convection inside the bucket. I'm hoping my water gets warm real fast so I can have that cup of coffee I've been waiting on all morning. Now, the third way that heat transfers is very important. It's how we get most of our energy. Most of our energy comes from the sun. And as a lot of you know, between the sun and the earth, there's nothing. So how does heat travel through empty space? It does that by what's called radiation. If I hold my hands out in front of the fireplace, now all of a sudden I still feel heat. That's because the heat is being transferred through waves, radiation, and hitting my hand. There's no conduction. I'm not actually hooked up to the fireplace. There's no convection because the molecules are moving up. This is radiation. Now those are the three primary ways that heat energy is transferred. Conduction, which is molecule to molecule to molecule. Convection, the molecules actually moving, and then radiation, the transfer of heat energy by waves. Well, hey, thanks for joining me today on Science Quest. I want you to remember that science is always a quest for knowledge. And sometimes that simple understanding of the world around us can be found in real simple places, like this backwoods cabin in northwest Indiana that we've ridden back to today. Well, I was going to go out and check on Sunny, but you know, I think I'm going to sit here for just a little bit longer and wait on my water to get hot for my cup of coffee today. Have a great day.